good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to present the first session, which is global health uh, through a customized approach, because for me, it's the opportunity not only for me, but maybe for you, to discover new processes and also uh, uh, problematic about not only that medicine will be uh, not only accessible, but also personalized. We have among us uh, high rank uh, speakers. So without wasting more time, please welcome Leroy Hood on stage. Please, thank you. Hi, Lira. You can hear me, huh? Lira Yehud, you are the president of the, institution, uh, the Institute of System Biology. I am. You are. You are a pioneer in genetic sequencing, and now you are interested in uh, what you call P4 medicine. Can you explain us, not only to me, but also to the yes. audience, yes. what is the essence of uh, P4 medicine, please? So, let me give you a personal story of how I came to personalized medicine or P4 medicine. As a young assistant professor at Caltech, I was uh, astounded with the incredible complexity of biology and disease and realized that studying things one gene or one protein at a time wasn't going to work. And indeed, what we really needed was a conceptual framework for dealing with complexity that later became systems biology. And we needed to develop the technologies and the strategies for bringing information to deal with complexity. And I had the good fortune to be involved uh, in all of those endeavors. We, uh, over the years, invented a series of six instruments that allowed you to read and write DNA. And these enabled high-throughput biology and big data. One of the instruments, the automated sequencer, got me invited to the first meeting ever on the Human Genome Project, and of course, that came into being and was successful. And from my point of view, its major accomplishment was it gave us a complete parts list of all genes. And that meant for the first time we could think about doing systems biology on humans. And finally, uh, later in my career, I had the opportunity to start the very first Institute of Systems Biology and to create, uh, at least initiate, system science and its application to disease. And of course, that application is systems medicine. And it has two features that are absolutely central to personalized medicine. One is that each of you as patients will in the near future be surrounded by a virtual data cloud of billions of data points of many, many different types. And this data cloud will be dynamic. That is, it, you will add to your data cloud every three months or six months so that you can capture not only the genetics, but the change, changes in your environment as well. And of course, the second thing that came out of systems medicine was the idea that biological networks mediate information. Uh, they direct our development, our physiologic responses, our aging. But when perturbed, they cause disease. And if we can capture the nature of those differences, we have deep insights into mechanisms, new diagnostics, and, and new therapeutics. Well, it turned out about uh, three or four years ago, there was a convergence of systems medicine on the one hand, with big data on the other hand, with patient-activated social networks on the third hand that led to a medicine which we call predictive, preventive, personalized, and participatory. And the first three Ps are self-evident. The fourth P, the essence of it, is that the patient will be at the very center of their own health care. P4 medicine differs from contemporary medicine in its proactive, it's focused on the individual. It has a major focus on wellness. It creates these dynamic data clouds. And it's very skeptical of how we do clinical trials today, taking 20,000 patients and averaging them to get results when each patient is unique genetically and unique environmentally. And P4 medicines, medicine analyzes them as unique individuals and aggregates according to interesting properties. 
And of course, the patient, the consumer-activated social networks are about how we teach patients about this new personalized medicine. It's doing crowdsourcing, so the patients themselves will help physicians learn to take care of themselves better. And they're advocates for pushing on a very conservative healthcare system uh, the kind of change I'm talking about. So this P4 personalized medicine is really just about two things. One, it's about quantifying wellness. The second, it's about demystifying disease. Society puts 98% of its resources into the disease side of that equation. And as a result, we have a lot of catching up to do scientifically on the wellness side of the equation. I would argue that there will begin to emerge from this point in time a separate new industry called the wellness industry. And I'd argue in a period of 10 years, it may well exceed in market cap the disease industry or uh, the current healthcare industry. And let me just say, wellness is critical uh, in two regards to this whole new vision of healthcare. One, wellness will allow each of us to optimize our own well-being and most efficiently use both our physical and mental capacities. And number two, the only way we can really understand disease is if we follow it from wellness to disease and get the earliest transition, figure out how to ameliorate it and put the patient back immediately on the wellness trajectory, saving society all of the downstream costs. So to push this whole ID forward, we started a project uh, about a year ago with 107 individuals. We created the dynamic data clouds. We were able to analyze and model the data clouds for each individual to identify actionable possibilities that allowed them to optimize their wellness and or avoid disease. And in fact, we've just uh, recently finished up the analyses of these data, and they're really uh, spectacular beyond belief. We haven't got time to go into the details here, but I will tell you what has happened is really quite remarkable. We have now a large catalog of actionable possibilities that'll be useful for pushing this vision forward. We have a database both of well individuals and of individuals who've transitioned into disease that give us fundamental new insights for creating the companies that will be the foundation entities of this new wellness trajectory. Some of them could be the Googles and or the Microsofts of this uh, entirely new industry. And a third thing that's beginning to happen is the cost of these tests will start to follow a Moore's law of decline, an exponential decline, bringing the cost down to the place that for the first time, we can think about globalizing this type of healthcare, uh, not only for developed worlds, but for developing worlds as well. And my vision for this new kind of P4 medicine is that we'll see a democratization of healthcare that was inconceivable even a short period of time ago.